Hello, I'm Jenny Parker. In this video I describe how to set up an online classroom using Adobe Connect and explain some of the features available that will assist you to deliver an online training session. The first thing you need to do is go to the Adobe Connect home page. Once you arrive at the home page, you will see in the top right hand side here a button to try Adobe Connect. So click on that button and you'll be taken to the Adobe Connect free trial page where you need to create an Adobe account. Fill in all the required fields with your information. You'll see there's quite a few uh, boxes to fill in here. Just choose whatever you're most comfortable with. And when you finish completing all the boxes down the bottom, tick the Accept Terms and click on the Submit button. After you've submitted your request, you'll receive an email to start connecting to your 30-day free trial. In the email, you'll find your account URL, password, names, etc. Click on the link to take you to your free trial. You'll then see the reminder message letting you know what date your trial expires and you can either click remind me later or don't remind me again. Once inside your Adobe Connect environment you'll see you have a range of different features available to you. What you're looking for is the virtual classroom. So click on this button. You then arrive at a screen where you can set up your classroom information. Just fill in the, the fields, especially the required ones with the little red asterisk. You can put in a summary about your session if you like, the date and the time that your session is going to start and the duration. I'd suggest you set it as anyone who has the URL can enter the room. You don't need to include audio conferencing, this is just if you're doing telephone conferencing. And click on the next button. We're not going to enrol learners because we've said that anyone with the URL can access it. So click next again. You can just ignore the next screen because it's about notifications for enrolled learners and we don't have any. So we click on next again. And this one also is about setting up reminders. So again, we don't have any people enrolled in it. So click on finish. Then it will give you the details for your virtual classroom and it will give you the link that you can send out to people to invite them to attend. If you click on this link, it will take you to your classroom or you can click on the Enter Virtual Classroom. Before we have a look at the features inside your Adobe Connect Classroom, let's have a look at how you invite your participants. I've opened the email that I received confirming my 30 day trial and I'm just going to click back on the account URL which will take me into my Adobe Connect account. You can see the URL here on the screen that will take you directly back into your room. However, what you want is to be able to copy that you can't from here. So if you go up to training on the menu and then you can see the training program listed here. I'm going to click on that and it will take you to that page which gave you all the information and the link. Now you can just copy that link, just highlight it, copy it and then you can just paste that link into an email and send it off to anyone you want to invite to the room. And when they paste that link into their browser They'll be shown this screen and they just need to click enter as a guest and type in their name. So in your email to them you just need to explain to click on enter as a guest, type in their name and then click on the enter room button and then they'll be brought into your Adobe Connect room. I've just come back to my Adobe Connect so I can enter the room myself. And the test person I put in, Mary, is still signed in. So you can see Mary turning up now under the participants. As you move your mouse over Mary's name, you'll see that you can assign her some certain facilities. So you can give her a private chat 
enable her audio so that she can speak, enable the video so that you can see Mary, request screen share which means that you can then see what's on Mary's screen. You could make Mary a host or a co-presenter. Let's have a look at some of the features available in your virtual classroom. On the top you'll find a series of menus. The meeting menu, one of the most important things in here is the record meeting. So make sure when you're doing your uh, training session that you click record meeting on. Give it a little name, a summary if you wish and click OK. OK, you'll see that it's a little message telling you that the recording is on and when you want to stop the recording you simply click on the stop recording button. Okay, the other features inside here you can explore on your own and obviously there's an end meeting one in there for when you're finished as well. The layouts, there's a number of different layouts that you can set your area to. You'll see here it's got lobby, classroom and analysis and you'll also see them over here on the right hand side. So at the moment we're in lobby view. I'd suggest probably classroom view might be the the better one but it's up to you to play with. It will just give you a large area for your screen. If you're turning on your webcam you'll have it here and you'll have the chat. If you've got lots of participants you may want to leave it back in that lobby area and leave the chat further there and have a bigger list here. And analysis is just a different layout that puts all the different pods on display for you. So I'll just click back to the lobby. And you'll see here in your layouts you can create your own new ones. If you want to play around with those you can. The pods are the different areas that we're looking at. So the share area, the chat, the attendees. They're all referred to as pods. So you can turn them on and off as you like. With the audio you can give the microphone to all participants at one time. So that's quite handy if you want to give everyone the microphone to start talking. Or you can take it off everyone at the same time. So you can see when I click on that microphone rights for participants, the little microphone has come up next to Mary's name. And again, I can turn that off by clicking on microphone rights in the audio menu. Volume control, so you can mute and adjust your speaker volume. The microphone, connect my audio. If you give participants enable audio, they will see this little microphone and they'll be able to connect to their audio. The same with the video, start my webcam. So you can start your own using these and once you give participants rights to them, they can start and stop theirs from there as well. Set status, the participants will also see this. If you ask people to raise their hand, so you might ask a question or you might use it to check existing knowledge, you can ask people to raise their hand. So it's a good idea to point these three tools out to participants when they first arrive in your training session. And you can see there's other things, other ways they can vote. They can change their speakers sound up and down. And they can do some little happy faces or clapping to indicate their emotions. So one of the most important areas is this section in the middle. As you can see at the moment, it says share my screen. So if I click on that, it will give me the facility to start sharing my screen with my participants. And the little drop down arrow gives you some more facilities. So share a document, in which case you can browse your computer and upload a document. Um, if you've already uploaded, you can go into your My Content and have a look there. You can also share the whiteboard. And you can see here that there's a range of tools available that you can use on the whiteboard the pencil so you can draw freehand. Also on that pencil one you'll find the highlighter so you can change and highlight information that's already on the screen. Oops, change colour. There we go. And you have an eraser so you can click back on the select tool and then select an item and delete it. You also have a text typing tool if you double click on the page you'll see the Times New Roman 16 which is the default come up. You can choose whichever style you like and whichever size you like and then type your message here. You've also got some shapes, different shapes to choose from, different colours for the outline and different colour for the fill. You've got some undo arrows which will undo what you've done and redo. 
And up the top here you have a pointer tool so that you can point out specific things on your page and you can drag it around and point to items and you can turn it off by clicking on it again. You can stop sharing the whiteboard screen, you could go to full screen, besides full screen you can also stop sharing. If you're doing a PowerPoint presentation you can find that in your document, upload from your computer and you just find the PowerPoint presentation. There we go. So it takes a little while to upload, so you might want to upload them prior to your session. Seeing the presenter, you can come in at any time. And once it's uploaded, it will convert your PowerPoint to the format that it requires to be able to see in your training room. Okay, once it's converted, you'll see it on screen and you'll be able to work through your presentation using the arrows here in the bottom left hand side. And this little icon to the right of it actually gives you a table of contents so that you can click to a particular slide. Okay, so we've covered the basics. If you want more information about any of the features inside Adobe Connect, then just go to the Adobe Connect help files and have a look at the tutorials.